Jeez, look at that. The whole motor out of that one. Yo, coming down this strip sometimes is a little depressing. It's like a BMW graveyard. The night we took all of this off, you know I deleted all the footage on accident? What? Yeah, it be happening like that, bro. I deleted all the footage on accident. Basically right now, we're um, changing it to <laughs> oil gasket housing right here. Oil filter. Oh, oil gasket. filter. I'm sorry, I'm tired. Oil filter housing. Once your cargo hits like 60,000 miles. <laughs> or the leak, or the leak. The leak. It was leaking right here. Terribly. Yeah. Terrible, like will not stop, it was rampant. The coolant was running out of there as soon as we poured it in. Yeah. So basically we had to take off the charge cooler. The charge cooler. Oh, the charge cooler. Yeah, because the B motors in the here. back. The B motors is back here. And which is the crazy thing about it, bro, they don't have not one video online, bro. About this. I Googled it. I just tried to find like yo, how do I take off the screws? What's the easiest way? There was nothing there, bro. Yeah, nothing nothing so at is... all. So I guess we're the first. <laughs> this is what we got right, and I deleted all the damn footage. Yo, well, they're gonna have to see the reverse. <laughs> all right, guys, so this is the best I could do. Uh, salvage some iPhone footage, and I can kind of walk you guys through what we did. So first step, I know you guys seem to us now, but first step is we removed all the plastics, like the ones on like the cowl, exposing the brake uh, hardware, brake booster, stuff like that. And also on the other side, I think that exposed uh, positive uh, jumping port, but both of those have to come off nonetheless, right underneath it, strut brace, and underneath that is a little plastic cover that blocks the rear of the engine. All that has to come off. Uh, once you get that, you have some access to uh, the back of the charge cooler, which you'll unclip all various hoses and wires that are connected to it. You have vacuum on top of it. You have electrical connectors like T-Map and stuff like that. And you also have uh, coolant hoses. Uh, I would say take a picture first, to be honest, so you know where everything kind of goes. That's what we did. And uh, the electrical connectors, you should be good. I don't think they connect into the wrong spot. Uh, other than that, charge pipe has to be removed as well, as you guys can see in the corner. And you just unloose, I think it's like four bolts or five bolts. They write all on the top to loosen the charge cooler and you just kind of wiggle it out there. Now the way we real now sorry, excuse me guys. The way we uh, removed it was we actually pulled up a little bit and then out. Uh, it will hit the head a little bit of the engine. So you kind of got to finagle it and wiggle it out. I would say just go by feel and what you guys are I don't know, feels familiar and right. But that's what we did did a lot of, a lot of tugging. Uh, see right here we can get it out. I'll try to fast forward to when we got it. So yeah, here you probably can catch a better angle of us uh, loosening up all the screws. Now we're shaking it to kind of feel which ones are caught on because we assumed the bolt was caught on to it. Now these screws don't necessarily come all the way out bolts or whatever and call it. They don't come all the way out, they're like held on through the back. So this is pretty much what you got to keep doing. Find out which one is holding uh, it on and just make sure they all completely loosened. So right here you can see we finally got the oil cooler or sorry, the charge cooler up. And uh, there's two coolant hoses, I'm assuming one in, one out, uh, right below it. So I'm going to head and pop off the clip and tugging one, looks like it comes off from here. The other one, I'll show you guys too, I think we filmed it, but we didn't end up loosening it from that uh, specific spot. I don't think you can. We actually took it off of one of the break offs from the expansion tank. So right here, you wanted to get a look of the valves, the intake valves on the car. Uh, you know, kind of I was telling, talking about carbon buildup and stuff like that. So these of us just showing you guys the ports as well. This car is about, I think, 65,000 miles on it. So direct injection, you know, no fuel hitting the back of those valves. They kind of look a little, you know, carbon buildup-y. This is a B48 motor. I have seen valves at M54s. They tend to go the you know tend to look the worst and 55 a lot better i haven't had to change my b58 uh, i'm assuming it's very well too uh, especially a lot of us guys that make power and we like to throw port injection or port meth anything really port will uh, clean those valves up or maintain them let me just say that it's better i'm not gonna say it's gonna clean them up perfectly but it will maintain them so that you'll never have to do any maintenance so that's a plus for the you you know b58 or b48 whatever modified fine guys direct injection whatever you call it yeah, and this is just me uh, 
getting one last throttle body connector, you know, off the car. Like I said, make sure all connectors are pretty much, you know, out the way, moving around. So right here, I'm trying to grab that hose right there. I'm gonna pop that off. These ones are a tad bit difficult. You know, you gotta do a lot of wiggling, take a lot of time, but the goal is to not break any of them. And this right here is where we took off the other end of the charge cooler. Like I said, we didn't take it off from the charge cooler. We took it off from like a like break off kind of thing. You guys can see. Yeah, so guys, so once we removed that, we were able to lock in on a leak. So I threw my phone down there with the flash on, started recording it. You guys can see right there in the cut. Uh, there's one bolt, that one bolt right, I can't even point to it. It's like right there. That's the hardest one to get out in between those two coolers. But you guys, right, guys so if you look real quick, if you look on the oil filter housing gasket, you can see right there, there's two bolts right there that we kind of taken out. Those two uh, obviously were required. Those were pretty much the easiest ones. You kind of can see how we got to that uh, bolt, those two bolts. The one that he's trying to reach for is a little bit lower, uh, right underneath that harness. And uh, you can see he kind of gave up over that one, but it's right there under that harness. And that one took a little bit more difficulty. We need a swivel to get to that one. And the one below it was one of the hardest ones in between the two coolers, which you guys have seen before. Yeah, so this is the top one that I was telling you guys about, the top right. Uh, like I said, we use a swivel, an extension. You guys can see the whole thing right there uh, to go ahead and get that out. Now keep in mind, these bolts do not come all the way out. They come, they come all the way out from the block of the motor, but they sit inside the housing. You can't take them out. So whenever it starts getting loose and rattling around, you know you're good to go. Okay. This holds? Mm -hmm. Which is the simple pop clip like all the rest of these. So we're gonna move these out the way, take this hose off, and we should be good. So you it's off for the most part. It's got one more bolt. That's been hell. Oh man. Yeah, so we got one in the top. I got I got some footage on my phone still, but so you can see to get the final bolt out, you have to remove the uh wheel well fender liner. Uh, and stick that, you can see I have a really long extension attached to the socket, which is a long socket. It's angling all the way down, you can see that angle, that deep angle, swivel, and you know, my guy was helping me guide it on and get it out, and that's this is literally the position right here we need to get it out. Yo, bro, when we'll, we we'll open it up and shot. They didn't find it, we said thank you. That's no, all man, what sorry. we want to find the garage. We want to, all right. Yeah, take it out, yeah. Take it on something else, let me see, hold up, hold up. Let me see what's up. Nah, it should be free, no? I was just being gentle, bro. No, ain't no, ain't no gentle in this game. Just make sure you don't snug on the wires. Oh, all of that. <laughs> and where's it leaking from? Yo, where's the other screw? Oh, right here. Oh, yeah, you gotta get a new one, bro. It's cracked. You see it? Yo, come on, man. Come on, bro. I did a good job, Joe. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, finally, yeah. We finally did it. Well, at least I'm happy. We know what the problem is. It's cracked. See, uh, so, yo, yo, you, yo, you, you diagnosed uh, and figured out your own, your own car, bro. But where's the gas? The gasket might still be on the thing. It has to be. But see, it, it, it cracked right here. You see it? This is where all your That's where it was from. leaking from, bro. That's, that's, where, that's where you was getting the leak. The coolant goes in here, you see the blue? Yeah. Coolant goes in and out of here, and oil goes in and out of where you see the black. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, once we bolt everything back up, because coolant goes out of here too, you see it? Yeah. So coolant right here and right here, oil looks like from right here and right here. You see we have a little coolant and oil mixture. So what we're gonna do is drain both. We're gonna drain all the coolant and drain all the oil. Don't understand why they make this engine so compact for. You know what it is? Because, bro, when they built this, they built the engine and put all the accessories and then they put it in the car. It's like, like all this stuff right here is like three bolts of like three, four bolts probably for the subframe. Right. So when they build the car, they have the wheels, the struts, everything, the motor, everything. And then they they lower the car in, onto the engine. So it ain't hard for them to do it because it they ain't in the, the car when they, when they installed it, yeah. See, my Oh, look, it's right in the yeah. front. But the newer cars, they, they change it to the back. So this, we, this is the same thing. 
How much yeah. miles you got on this motor? It's got 197,000 miles. And it's running still. Yeah. I bought it for $2,000. Right, it's running right? perfect. No check engine light or nothing. Running, right? Yeah. <laughs> like when I first got it, remember, I did the, they, did the, they did the turbo. They put the new turbo in there. Wait, you needed a new turbo when you first got it? Yeah, cooling got into it. What? That's when I drove it down south. Cooling got into the turbo? Yeah, I think I was driving an eco and I was kind of doing too much in eco. Nah, that's not, oh. that's not what it is, bro. Oh, yeah. Like 130 down, not it don't down matter. Down yeah, somewhere. eco, sport, it's all the yeah. same oh, thing. Yeah. Shit, I don't know. I got you, because I ain't going to lie. I'm like, no problem. Wait, you know the kid? Oh, uh, hello? I really feel good, though. I feel like I did a. Honestly, work. <laughs> Bill, give it a thumbnail, right? Give it the same look, like. <laughs> now nah, you good, bro? Fucking shit. Fucking shit. He got everybody. Yeah, take, bro, he got everybody like, taking turns with it, like I like guess his baby just came out. Just like that. Just like that. Ugh. So guys, just like that, we have the oil filter housing off the car. Uh, just like that is like an understatement because it took a lot, a lot of work. So I wasn't actually going to film this. Boy hit me up. He was having issues where the car was leaking coolant very, very fast. It was coming from the rear, the rear of the engine, which kind of struck me as odd i'm thinking the trade the oil pan i mean I'm, I'm thinking all of the proper you know splash guard and stuff like that underneath the car was pushing it to come out of the back of the car so so i show up he already bought a hose and everything he said every, everybody was telling him it's a common issue one guy even came to look at it see that it was leaking out of some hose i'll try to show you guys what it is however i swapped that it was still leaking the same amount all right took my phone we have flashlights and i hit the record button and i'm just moving it all the way around and that's where we see that's where i see that it was actually leaking out of the oil filter housing we looked up online research it's literally only one picture one freaking picture no videos of it ever done and i told him straight up i'm like listen i've never done it before i called my boy who worked at a shop he's never done it before uh, i think it's because the motors are typically new and a lot of people that have this issue might just have warranty or just give it up to the dealer. No one wants to DIY this. I can understand why. The oil filter housing in the B-Series motors are in the back, not the front, like the N-Series motors. So even on my B58, I would have, if I would have the same issue, uh, I mean, you guys see, that would have to be done. I actually have a video up of me changing one on my 5 Series many, many years ago. To give you guys a little update, we got that off. I'm gonna give you guys as much footage as I possibly can uh, because when we did decide to film it, all the footage, I formatted the card, so I'm thinking in my head, I had another video to film. So I'm thinking in my head like, oh, you know what? I, I think I uploaded everything. I didn't upload everything. So all that footage is gone. So guys, bear with me and I hope that we are able to shine a light or shed the light on some of you guys having this issue because yo, not one, not one video out there about this. It's crazy. In order to part when it gets here, we should have a lot easier time to go ahead and get this done just because we know what we're doing now. We know what has to happen. And all the hoses, all the hoses and electrical connectors are gonna be a pain, a pain. Look, I took a video so we can kind of see where everything goes. A lot of connectors really don't connect to the wrong thing. So it should be pretty simple, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna get out of here. Peace out. So guys, I hope you guys like that little random video, but I gotta show you guys something. Spending a couple of days on my boy's car, really delayed the process in the E90, but yeah, so we got the bumper in for the E90. Can't wait. Special thank you and shout out to the guys over at Keys Motorsports, Brian, David, I think, and the rest of you guys out there for making this possible. Stay tuned.